Good morning, everyone. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'd like to welcome everybody this morning here at Livingstone Family Church. I'd like to welcome our Livingstone Family Church uh, live stream family as well. Let's give uh, everybody a hand out to them as well. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'd like to uh, say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Whether you're a father, a grandfather, a brother, amen. amen. Happy Father's Day. Our spiritual fathers, especially our Father in heaven, amen. I just want to say a, a, a verse there this morning, amen. amen. It's in the book of Psalms 103, 103, verse 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him amen so god as a father and our fathers here and our earthly fathers they also have compassion just like less like our father in heaven proverbs 22 6 says start children off on the way they should go as when he is old he will not depart from it amen, amen, amen. hallelujah so the word of God says, uh, start your children off. Amen. Yes. The way they should go. Amen. amen. That way when they get old, they will not depart. Right. Amen. A father always has compassion. Yes. The best one that I love in the Bible is the prodigal son. Amen. amen. Luke 15, 17 says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare and I perish with with hunger verse 18 says I will rise and go to my father and will say to him father I have sinned against you again heaven and I and before you verse 19 I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your high servants. In verse 20, and we'll pray. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion yes. and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That is just like our Father in heaven. Amen. When we sin, Amen. Our Father, when we come to Him and we say, Jesus, forgive us. Forgive me. Our Father comes and He says, with no condition, He comes and He embraces. Amen. Because He loves us. Amen. A Father. Now, whether your your Father was your mother. Amen. You give that person, your mother, praise as well. Amen. Amen. A father and a mother always have compassion for the children, no matter what. Amen. Just like our father in heaven. He loves us unconditionally. Amen. And he loves you unconditionally. Yes. Whether, yes. amen, we do wrong yes. or right. Amen. Yesterday, I just wanted to share this one yesterday. My daughter gave me this card. Amen. And it says, Dad. So, this is to my Father in Heaven. Dad. I know there was times when raising me wasn't so easy. Does that sound like some of us? Amen. amen. When our parents were raising us, amen, and I struggle, amen? We all struggle. We think we know it all. I didn't always agree with the rules or understanding when you were trying to teach me values or responsibilities. I did that. I, I prayed that to my Father in Heaven also, you know? But sometimes when God was trying to get my attention, when the Holy Spirit was trying to get my attention, they was trying to teach me values or responsibilities and I would run. But 
I see that it was all for me. That you knew what you were doing and I wouldn't be who I am without your effort and your love. Amen. So this morning, let us pray. Amen. And give God thanks for this service. Amen. This morning. And for those that are watching us on live stream and those that are on the way. Amen. We want to say good morning and let's pray. Father God, in the yes. mighty name of Jesus, yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, for thank who you are. For your mercies, Father God. For your mercies are new every day, Father God. We want to thank you, Father, for this Father's Day. We say Happy Father's Day. Not only today for you, our God, but you every day, Father. To our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for leading us here, Holy Spirit, this morning to be here in one accord, Father God, in one mind, praising your name, to lift up your name, receive the praises of your people, Father God. Receive all the, the praises, Father God, all the prayers this morning, Father God. You want to say a prayer for our sister, Lozano, Father God, who was in the hospital again, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you touch all those surgeons, Father God, all the uh, the health staff, Father God, this morning that are, are working with her, taking care of her, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you make a way, Father God, that you, Father God, break that chain of infirmity, Father God, right now, Father God, from her body, Father God. Lift up, Father God, that pain, Father God. Embrace her, Father God. Comfort her, Father God. Give her peace, Father God. Let your Holy Spirit, Father God, just come and overwhelm her, Father God, with love and joy, Father God. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Father God, and we give this service to you, Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's all stand to our feet this morning, and let's just welcome the Holy Spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you.
say, I will bless the Lord. Come on, say, in his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, let's declare that yes, we will.
take your seats for one moment before you see it. Look at somebody and tell them I came to bless the Lord today. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be in church this Sunday morning. Hallelujah, celebrating the glory of God, the goodness of God. And um, for just a few moments, you can be seated. I want to introduce, give a proper introduction today to these wonderful people, friends of mine that I've known for over 30 years. Over 30 years, I met this wonderful man and pastor and his family. And uh, they were such a blessing to my life. And they're going to bless us now with song. And, and we just want to encourage you to just let go and let God. Amen. Let go and let God because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm going to turn these guys loose. Um, this brother Dave and uh, you know used to play for a Christian band called Abandoned. I don't know if anybody heard of that group, Abandoned, years ago. And uh, a great gift, great talent. And of course his wife, Crystal. Um, I knew her when she was just a little girl. <laughs> And God's done a wonderful work. I know you're going to get blessed. Amen. But I want to encourage you to don't just listen and uh, be a spectator. Amen. Amen. But we are participators. Amen. Amen. In That's the right. kingdom of God. You're sitting down now. But I tell you what, we're going to be getting up in just a few moments. So I want you to welcome, amen, uh, the ministry team of Jehovah Jireh Ministry and Church. God bless you.
to cause that divide. And so this morning, we've come to put a plug on the enemy's process of what he thinks he's doing in our homes and in our family. We've come to put a plug in that flow of evil and divisiveness. And we've come to say that the enemy is defeated. The family, in the name of Jesus, is made whole, made complete in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that though we may not see what we expect right now, we do see by faith that God is working in our home, in our family, in our children, in our grandchildren. And without a shadow of a doubt, we must have faith that God is doing the work. As long as we so live to declare to our family, as husbands, as fathers, you must do what the book of Deuteronomy says in chapter 6. You must, as the word says, these words which I command you today, fathers, to be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Fathers, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. So God is declaring to his children, the men of God, that daily we must declare the commandments of the Lord. Daily we must declare and live out those things that God has already purposed for you to walk out, to live out, and to speak out. Because one thing that our children can see or not see is consistency. Consistency is key. And if we're not consistent as parents, as fathers, as grandparents, we say one thing, but we live a different way. I can tell you one thing, and I want to honor my husband today. I want to honor him because he has been faithful. Not perfect, but he has been faithful to the call. Not necessarily the call of pastoring, although he is called to pastor. But he's been faithful to the call of being a husband and being a father. Because that comes first before the ministry. And he's forever shown that love and that support to me as his wife and to his children. And yes, even his children will sometimes say, because he's, I tell you, if we're at the beach, we're at the movies, we're at the pool, he's talking, he's walking, and he's declaring what the word of God says to us as his family. And I know that his heart is not just for his home, but it's for his church home as well. He wouldn't be here. He wouldn't be doing what he does. As pastors, they wouldn't be doing what they do if their heart wasn't for the families of God here in this house. And so I honor him today as my husband and the father of all four of our children, three of which are here in the house with us today. And that alone is a testimony. And all three of our boys are here with us today celebrating such a special, special day. And so how can we not be grateful to our Abba Father who blesses us with so many good things? And so today we're going to bless your seed. We're going to bless your giving because it's out of our generosity and our gratitude that we say, Lord, Whatever you have put in my heart already to give and to sow into your kingdom, it's a family team effort. It's not a one person, two person job. It takes all of us to keep moving the ministry and the word of God forward through this local assembly. So if you have your seat today, just raise your hand with it, amen, and we're going to believe and declare that the Lord is going to multiply and replenish. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we honor you with our seed, with our giving. Thank you for every father represented 
here in this house today. Thank you for every father figure even. Those even that are watching us through live stream and maybe later YouTube, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you bless our fathers today. Bless every dad. Bless, Father God, every father figure. Lord, you know the need. You know their heart's desire. But Lord, as we just read in your word, Lord, allow every father, every dad to live uprightly before you first. So that they, as their family follows them, can lead with righteousness and with peace towards you. So Father, we thank you once again for every giver. Thank you, Lord, that this is a team effort as a family of God. Lord, we sow seed on good ground. And we pray, Lord, as your word says, and we declare it, that you will give seed to the sower. So we declare that right now in the name above every name. Bless your people as they come and they give today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Come on up today and give cheerfully to the Lord. Of God, thank you, thank you, um, 
Jehovah Jireh ministry team. We appreciate that so much. And they're going to be back. They're going to do a couple of more songs at the end, the altar call. And, right. and uh, we're just uh, going to have a good time this Father's Day. Amen. Amen. Tell you what, I can hear this music over and over yes. and over again. Yes. Yes. I just feel like being in my car, in my, in my vehicle, just worshiping God with this music. Yes. Yes. And praise God for Sister Crystal, Brother Dave, yes. Pastor Gilbert. I forgot Pastor Gilbert knows how to play the bass. All right. Forgot about that, but uh, they're going to come up in just a moment. Our pastor's going to come up in just a moment and bring the word. But just before that, I asked my sister-in-law, Sister Esther Mata, to bless us with song. This is a song that is so appropriate for today, Father's Day. You know, not too long ago, my sister-in-law, Sister Esther Mata, came up to me and said, "Pastor, I." I need to obey the Lord. I said, what do you mean? She said, God's been giving me some songs. God's been giving me inspiration to write songs. And I need to share it. I need to release it. And I said, well, yes, let's do it. And she's been blessing me. I know she's blessing you as well. And uh, these songs that she's been blessing us with, she wrote. And, uh, you know, I can't write songs. Um, I can write sermons a little bit. But I can't write songs. That's a wonderful gift that God has given her. Amen, yeah. And this song is so beautiful. It talks about Father's Day. I want to let her share a little bit about it. But just before the man of God comes and brings the word, I want her to bless, bless you, bless this church, bless the congregation, bless those watching us by Facebook and live stream, YouTube, and uh, let it bless you. And I know it will. Yeah. Let's welcome Sister Esther yeah. Michael.
from Sister Esther. And that is the character and the heart of God, is that he's yes. tough and he's tender. That's right. Yes. Amen. Well, we got a lot of gift and talent this morning in the yes. house of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Are y'all ready to receive the word yes. of the Lord yes. today? Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, I don't know what you're planning to do later on this afternoon. We got a few little things we got planned in, in our family. But like my wife said, I'm so glad that all three of my boys are with me this morning. Yes. And that's the greatest gift, right? More than, I've already gotten, gotten gifts already this morning uh, for Father's Day, and I thank the Lord for that. Yeah. But the greatest gift is to see the presence of my children yeah. in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Well, what can we say about this man of God? Oh, and we're going to release if uh, we have uh, children's class and nursery available. So all the little ones, if you want to go back, you can go right now, and Sister Esther is going to teach you. She's working overtime this morning. Yeah. Amen. All right, so what can I say about the man of God? Uh, I've known this man for, I was counting the other day, had Pastor Gilbert, and about 33 years wow. I've known this man. That's how long I've been in San Antonio. And when I came to San Antonio, I met this man and his family, and, uh, and I knew that God had called me to this city. God used him in a mighty way to confirm that he spoke a word to me, I'll never forget, word in my brother's living room when he, my brother was pastoring and starting a church and he spoke a word to me. He said, I believe God has something for you to do, Mark. God has something for you to do in San Antonio. And I had not yet moved. I had not yet moved from Dallas to uh, San Antonio, but I was praying, asking God for wisdom, direction, confirmation, all of that. And uh, long story short, God used this man to uh, bring me to this city. And, uh, and I thank the Lord for that. And we appreciate you, Pastor Gilbert. His wife is here with us as well, Sister Amen. Diane. Amen. And Amen. we're so happy that she's with us. Amen. Back this man up 110%. You know, one thing yeah. I see with her is she's a faithful supporter right. of, of this Amen. man of God. That's right. Amen. No matter through the highs and the lows yes. and the ups and the downs. Yes. Um, and we certainly remember her, her mother, who recently passed away to be with the Lord, yeah. uh, Sister Juarez, and also Brother Ben. Well, we miss Brother Ben. And uh, and her mother was a strong woman of God. Mm. And uh, she recently went to be with the Lord. And uh, we're so, uh, I'm just so grateful. I'm so thankful for the connections that God has placed in my life. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't be, I don't think so, Pastor Gilbert, behind this sacred desk doing what God's called me to do in this season of my life without your life, without your testimony, Amen. and without your heart for God. So let's welcome, yeah. can I get you to stand on your feet? Let's welcome Pastor Gilbert, sit back at the Holy Family Church and Ministry. God bless you, sir. You're looking good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Is this my ring? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, and it's true, ministry is hard. It yes. is. Ministry is hard. Come on. Uh, sometimes, you know, you want to throw in the towel. And, yes, sir. And as, a, as a man, yeah. you know, you cry, yeah. but you have someone, your wife, that backs you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that sometimes Thank gets you after Lord. you. Thank you, Lord. Right. Why are you crying? Get up. Dry your tears. That's right. That's right. Get up. Move okay. forward. But you're crying. Come on. You know, when I started ministry, you know, learning all these, these ins and outs, you know, I'm not going to get into it. People he broke bread with and <laughs> along that, those lines, I'm not going to go into it. But you know, when I, when I started ministry, I was 6'4", and now I'm 5'9". That's how heavy ministry has has become. I mean, it's it's not it's not for the faint of heart. It's, you have to hang in there and because the one thing we have to understand is that, that God is faithful. That God is faithful. We might not receive our reward here on earth. But we will receive it right. in heaven. Hallelujah. And you know what? It, to me, it's not, it's not important to me. It's not important the reward. You know, the, the Lord is, it has in store for us. But the, the, one, the one thing that I do want to hear from the Lord is I want to go and I want to give him a hug. Right. You know, with his big old smile. Oh, yeah. And for him to say, Gilbert, you did good. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I need. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day to everyone. Amen. And uh, 
If you have your Bibles, let's get into the Word of God. If you have your Bible, let's get into the Word of God this yes, morning. Sir. Yes, sir. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 15, a story that you know very well. Yes. Luke chapter 15. Mm -hmm. Come on. And some of you know it very well. And it talks about a father who had two sons. Yes. But what I want to do this morning is that I want to kind of switch it. And I want to look at the father. Ah. I want to look at the father because sometimes we omit the father and what That's he's good. going through. You know, we omit his feelings and his emotions. And I want to deal with that. This morning, Luke chapter 15, look at verse 11. I'm going to begin on verse 11. Yes, sir. The Bible began to say that Jesus continued and there was a man who had two sons. Somebody yes. say two sons. Two sons. Yes. And the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Now, in Middle Eastern culture, it is unheard of for the son to ask for his inheritance before the father has passed away. Wow. So what it is, is that the son was saying, I'm tired of you, father, ah. telling me what to do. Ah. I want to go my own way. Ah. I want to spend money the way I want to spend. Come on, come on, I, 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 I'm smarter than you, than you are. Ah. And so ah. the son was saying, I don't like you. Ah. You're standing over my shoulder and I've gotten tired of it. I'm smart. Huh? I remember growing up and we start 13, 14, and we start having those two little, two little hairs start coming out of our chin. And, uh, we start puffing up and, you know, we start flexing. I don't know what it is. As young guys, you know, we start looking in the mirror and start doing all this stuff, you know. And I think it's a guy thing, right? It's a guy thing. And once we get to that age, we don't like anyone to tell us what to do. We get it. We get an argument with our father. We get an argument with our mother. We want to do our own thing. So this morning, what kind of father was he? What kind of father was this man that we're talking about? Was he stern? Was he uh, hard with his children? Four times he's mentioned in this story. Four times. Look at verse twelve. And verse 12, it says that the younger one said to the father, give me my estate. Mm. And the Amplified, when you read it, it means inappropriately. Mm. He asked for his money inappropriately. And I looked up the word, it says the word, it means it's not suitable the way he asked. Wow. Mm. It wasn't in the proper circumstance the way that he asked. Okay, yes. The younger son said, I want to do my thing. Mm -hmm. To me, I believe he didn't have a good relationship with his father. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a good relationship with his father. I remember as a children were growing up, can we spend the night somewhere? No. <laughs> yeah. But they go to church? No. <laughs> yeah. Can we take the bus? No. Right. We'll drop you off at school. That's right. Huh? All right. And because of that, the children don't understand that there's danger that is out there. Right, right. The enemy is out there to do harm right, to your children. Right, right, but as right, parents, right. God on. has given us that responsibility to look out for them. To say, you're not going to spend the night. Because we don't know what the other parents are up to. We don't know. He might be coming to church. But inside his heart, he's a child molester. Come on, somebody. We don't know what takes place in the house. But God has given us that responsibility. Oh, preach it, preach it, preach it. Did you know that the right, the dad had the right to beat his child for asking for that inheritance? All right. He could have beat him so severely, but he doesn't. What he does is that he gives him the freedom to make that choice. Here, son, I'm giving you this money. Wow. Wow. I'm giving you this money. See, God does not force himself on you. You don't want it, That's it's right. okay. If you don't want him, he's okay. The father does not force himself on the child. He says, okay, son, I taught you how to handle money. I taught you how to be good. I taught you how to honor people. But if you want to take your money and do whatever you want to do with it, here it is. I'm giving it to you. Wow. Yeah. And God is just like that. You know what we do as a Christian? We want to run with our own understanding of how to serve God. Oh, I don't like this page. So we tear it out of the Bible. And I'm going to make up my own rules. And I'm going to make up my own things. How to serve God. But you know that if you put God first, that He will bless you in all things. When you begin to neglect the things of the world, God will bless you. Come on. 
We are running from the very thing God says. Come on. Oh, I just need another man. That's all I need. If I had another woman, mm, mm, things would be different at home. Huh? I want to trade in my jalopy for a new Cadillac. I want another woman. Somebody that will please me and bring me my shoes instead of me telling me, hey, pick up your clothes. Huh? Wash your dishes. Come on, somebody. Come on, Pastor. That's good. That's good. But God is just like that. See, the Bible says that in Revelation 3.20 that he is standing at the door of your yeah. heart and he's knocking and he's asking, I want to come into you. I want to be with you. I want to talk with you. I want to suck with you. I want to show you some things. But when we begin to make our own rules and regulations to tell God, God, no, only up to here, I'll take over. Things will not work well. Ah, come on. And we become like Jacob. All right. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled with God. Ah. God said, don't go there. But what happens? We find you there. When your kids tell you, I'm going to spend the night at so-so's house and they're somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Why are you all mad? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Why are you all mad? Yeah. Huh? Ah. Come on. Yeah. The Bible says in verse 12 that he asked for his father, his inheritance, and he divided his property and he gave it to them. Look at verse 13. The Bible says that not long after that, the younger son got, to, to got all that he had. And he set out for a, a distant country. Where did he go? A distant country. See, when people are on sin, they don't stay close to family. They don't stay close to the church. Oh, it's pastor. <laughs> come on. Oh, my God. Huh? Come on, come on. Get the six-pack out of the cart. He's coming. <laughs> when people begin to sin before God or sin before the family or sin before the church, they want to hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go to a distant place where nobody yeah, knows them. Yeah, yeah. Come on, preach, preach. And they think that they can run from God, but God knows exactly where you are. Yeah, yeah. God knows exactly what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Father gives a son the freedom to choose yeah. life or yes. death. Yes, sir. He gives him the ability that, son, you need to know what truth is. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You need to know what it's all about. Mm. And I looked at the word prodigal. All right. And the word prodigal means spending money or resources freely and recklessly. Uh, wastefully extravagant. Mama, huh? mama. Oh, let me Come go on. somewhere. Come on, preach, preach. Spending money where, huh? wherever. Huh. We don't need to give a tie. I need a new dress. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't need to sow any seed. All right. Mm. All right. Come on. All right. Yeah. One thing I've learned is how to sow seed. Yes. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. It was on one occasion. We didn't have any food. For two days, we were eating popcorn. All right. Some of the kids were little. We were eating popcorn. Wow. Wow. It would have been easy to go and ask and borrow money to right. go tell our parents, hey, we don't have any food. But for two days, we ate popcorn. Right. They had shut off our light, I think the water. So we went to the church and we were spending the night there wow. crying out to God. Mm. Come on. Two days, we get a check from the mail from Saul. It says, you're such a good pair, we're going to reward you. Ah. Hello, Pizza Hut. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to reward you. You don't think that God is good when we trust in Him and yeah. believe in Him? He will come through for us. And we begin to give God what is His. Begin to give Him His tithe. Begin to sow seed. God said He would bless you according to Deuteronomy 28. It says He will bless you in the city and He will bless you in the country. Your fruit, the womb will be blessed in the name of Jesus. You'll be blessed going in, you'll be blessed going out. There's nothing that God cannot do. And God will grant your enemies who rise up against you, the Bible says, to flee from you. Isn't that something? But you got to make up a choice, honey. Come on, come on. You got to make up your choice. You've been asking for a man of God, you better get into some prayer. You've been asking for a woman of God, you better begin to get yourself in prayer. Just because you look good, she looks good, doesn't mean it's good. Come on, somebody. You'll be blessed if you make God. 
You're number one. Come on. Come on. The Bible says, look what the Bible says. Not long after that, the son left to a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. He squandered, he spent his money, things that he didn't even need. He began to spend on maybe drugs and alcohol, on prostitutes. Ah, he began to spend this money. Because Junior knew better than his dad. Ah. You don't have to tell me, Dad, I know. I know. I know everything there is. I got the answers. When his son is in a distant country, Spending his money. Yes. I imagine the father on his table crying out to God, saying, God, take care of him. Yeah. 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 Father, protect him. Yeah. He would walk outside and already probably had a path already on the ground, walking back and forth to see if that was the day that his son was going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Even though his son didn't want a relationship with him. He loved his son. I don't care what your sons do. They're still your sons. I don't care what your daughters do. They're still your daughters. And that's what we have to understand. The relationship. Even though maybe they, might want, they might not want you right now. But one day they're going to come. Daddy, can you pray for me? Mama, can you pray for me? The Bible says that there was a famine. And he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Just when... Two young people fall in love. Oh, that's all we need is love. <laughs> Where are you going to live? With daddy and mommy. We'll stay in that little room. No, but, no, but you're going to work. You're going to work. It's not easy raising children, and I understand what it's all about. When the children come home drunk and want to spend the night and do their thing and tell you what's going to happen, no, you're not. Sometimes you have to open the door and say, you got to leave. you got to go. And I've been there and I'm telling you that. But it's because you love them and you're standing for the word of God. I'm not going to have my son bring his girlfriend, my daughter bring a boyfriend, and shack up in the back and do their thing. No, my house is holy. My house has been dedicated to God. I'm going to rely on the presence of the Lord. I'd rather out of God than honor you. And we have to understand that God is... Someone that we need to appease and need to honor. The Bible says that there was a famine. There was a famine in the whole country. And he began to be in need. I don't know how you came to Christ, but I came in need. When I was in need, at the end of my rope, I came to Jesus. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Gilbert, what are you going to do? Living like an idiot. Come on. Wanted to club. Wanted to dance. Do, be at the clubs every day. Got a car. I could not afford. Mm. Because the devil said, get it. <laughs> and I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Firebird. Nice car. Mm. I didn't even know I was going to pay it. Uh -huh. Getting uh -huh. ready to go out. The presence of God came into my mom's apartment. I was staying there. Mm. And it seemed like the lights got brighter. Mm. And I heard the voice of God say, Gilbert, if you're going to serve the world, serve it. But if you're going to serve me, serve me. And I remember I got on my knees and I cried. And how long I was there, I don't know. But when I got up, I was a different man. Yeah. I was a different man. Yeah. Something happened. Come on. When you're in need, something will begin to happen. Yeah. If you're a Christian and you're believing God, hmm, yeah. there's a bigger building coming. Yeah. There's a bigger building coming. There's a bigger building coming. There's a bigger building coming. Don't, 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 don't look at the natural. It has nothing to do with natural. That's right. That's right. Amen. The Bible says this that he was in need. He was in need. Come on. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country. Mm. Now I looked up that phrase, he hired himself, he went out. In the Amplified, mm. in 
the Amplified, it says he forced himself. Mm. Begging. Wow. He forced himself. I, I need a job. And you know what they told him? All right, we'll hire you. The only thing that you're going to be responsible is for feeding those pigs. You know, and I used to think that the word pods, carob, was being fed to the pigs. I always thought it was slop. And it wasn't slop. They get it from a fruit tree. And they mash it up. And they mix it with other things to feed the pigs. But there's one thing. Jews have no right to be with pigs. Mm, that's right, that's right. Jews will not eat pork. That's right, that's right. Those of you that like pork chops, <laughs> pork short ribs, <laughs> to the Jews is an abomination because it's ah, a filthy animal. That's right. They will not eat it. Yeah, that's right. So now he's feeding the pigs and he wants to eat. He's so hungry that he wants to eat the food that belongs to the pigs. Mm. Isn't that something? We tell our children, Amigo, it's better if you serve God. We tell our, children, our daughters, it is better if you just begin to serve God. No, I don't want it. I want to be out there clubbing. I want to be out there drinking. Ah. And you know what it is? Is that with the pigs. Ah. The pigs has come into right. their life right. and right. now they're hooked on drugs and they're hooked on alcohol and they're hooked on all these other things and they cannot break free. Ah. Come on, just a little bit. Nothing will happen. Just a little bit. Mm. Nothing will happen to me that I'm in control. Ah. They're with the pigs. Wow. Wow. See, wow. sin will take you further than you want yes. to go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It'll make you pay more than you wanted to pay. Yeah. And it'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. Yeah. Wow. That's what sin does. People want to think that they're in control of sin and you're not. Yeah. That's right. That's the right. devil wants nothing more than to destroy your ah. life. Yeah. He wants nothing more than to destroy your life. That's right. Amen. That's right. Wow. Yes. Mm. But his father was praying. Mm. His father was praying. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your children need to see you pray. Ah. Ah. Your children need to see you pray. I don't know what kind of dad, yes. what kind of example you were to your children. I don't know. But the past is the past. And let's yes. move on. Yes. 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 My father left when I was seven years old. I never saw him. I never talked to him. He never came and visited us. I didn't see him again until I was 23 when I graduated from Bible college. Wow. Wow. I saw him again. And the Lord had to deal with my heart. I had to forgive. Mm. I had to forgive. Mm. I have a relationship with him, with him now. I'm the only one out of all his offspring. And I tell him I love you, Dad. Yes. And I had to come to terms. And I had to forgive him. Yes. Not for his sake, but for my sake. Ah, so that I could be free. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His father was praying for his son. Come on. Thank God for daddies that know how to pray. Thank God for daddies that know how to take care of their wives. It's okay to kiss your wife in front of your children. Ooh, gross. It's okay. For the husband to chase his wife around the kitchen. It's okay yeah, to pick her up and hug her. It's okay right. to find them, right. to find your guys making out. Ah, oh. all right, all right, all right. Because you're teaching something to your children. Thank God for daddies that know how to pray, that know how to use the word of God. Yeah. You know, the devil is a, a filthy, lying, cheating. He will take everything if you're not fighting for it today. When he gets you hooked on something, you're hooked. But the power of the blood of the Lamb can break every chain in the name of Jesus. See, I, I, I have a lawyer. Come on. I can trust an almighty God because I have a lawyer that tells me that I already won. Not that I'm going to win. I already won. I already have the victory. I don't have to wait for yesterday. I don't have to wait for tomorrow. I don't have to wait for the next week. I already won. I already have the victory. But you have to understand that who's on your side? Who's on your corner? He is the life. He is the light. He is the alpha, omega, beginning and the end. He's the resurrection and the life. People know him as good, wonderful counselor, almighty God. He is good, worthy to be praised. Lazarus was dead, the Bible says. Lazarus was dead for.
four days and he said, oh, I'm hearing something. Jesus began to call his name. Come on. Come he began on. to call his name. Hallelujah. He said, Lazarus. Come on. Just Lazarus. Right. I don't want anybody else coming. He had the power to bring everybody up. Yeah. But he said, I don't want it. I, I, I'm talking to Lazarus. Lazarus. Yeah. He said, come forth. And Lazarus says, I'm hearing the God Almighty. I'm hearing the Son of God. He, I'm hearing the resurrection. And he gets up and he walks out of the tomb. And when Jesus says, unbound him, he is bound, but now he's going to be unbound. He was on drugs, but he would be on drugs no more. He was an alcoholic, but he will not be an alcoholic no more. He will preach my word. He will be an evangelist. He will be a missionary. He will bring forth the word of God. Hallelujah. No, you're more than a conqueror. Come on. You're more than a conqueror. We have to realize that is sometimes we got an anointing. We have to anoint our children while they're asleep. Go anoint their big feet in the name of Jesus. Go anoint their forehead. Go anoint their jackets. Go anoint their clothes. When they wake up and say, what's all this oil? I'm praying for you, honey. You're going to get a revelation of God. I'm praying for you. See, the Bible says that we are more than a conquerors. He told this to Peter. He said, I've given you the key. We forget that. Yeah. I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. I'm giving you the keys of whatever you want. Loose in heaven shall be loose in heaven. Yeah. Whatever you want shall be bound in heaven. Yeah. Daddy knew how to pray. I'm talking uh -huh. about faith. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he couldn't see it, it's coming. It's coming. Mm. Mama, mama. It's coming. Come on, Amen. Amen. Yes, when? Yeah. Look in your word. When does something change? Come on. When? Does something change? Look at verse 16. Come on. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. See, there's steak. Tea. Honey, there's T-bone in the house of God, and you're, ah. you're, you're settling for eggs. God has good things for you, and you're settling for second best. Yeah. Ah. The Bible says that he was hungry, and no one gave him anything. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. What? What? What does that say? Come on, come on. When yeah. he came yeah. to his senses. Yeah. Yes, yes. In my father's house. Yeah. In my daddy's house. Yeah. In my daddy and mama's house, they have air conditioning. There's no reason for you to be in a high, oh. 100 degree weather. Come on, say right. 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 In my father's house. Mm. When he came to his senses. I'm going to teach you something this morning. Come on. Second Corinthians 4.4. 4. Come on. I'm going to teach you something this morning. Come on. Come on. Teach us. Yes. When, you know, we, we pray for God to save people and God wants to save people. That's not the problem. Right. Come on. The Bible, Come on. Jesus said, that I came that no one would be lost. That's right. That's right. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says this. The God of this age ah, has right. blinded the that's minds right. of right. unbelievers that's right. so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, right. who is the image of God. Wow, wow, that's mm -hmm. it, that's it. Come mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. come on. Mm -hmm. Begin to pray that the eyes of your children be open. Yes. yes that yes. they will see yes. the gospel yes. of the glory yes. of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. 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 Began to pray that their eyes be open. When the Bible says that his eyes, when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare and here I am starving to death ah, he ah. came to his senses That's right. he realized Come on. when you're doing drugs we're praying for them right. they're going to come to the senses and break free of them yes, yes, yes. Come on. the Bible says this so he got up he got up Come on. he got yes, up yes, yes, yes he got up he didn't just say, I'm going to do it. He said, he got up. Come on, come on, come on. You know, I was going to go to church, but oh my God, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. I was going to go to prayer, but nobody. <laughs> come on, Pastor. That new show's coming out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm? yeah. Come on. Yeah. 
When this young man comes to his senses, the Bible says that he got up. Got up, yes. He went forward. Yes, yes. And then the Bible says, I love this. Look what it says. He says, I'm starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father's house. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. To me, that's repentance. Yeah. That's repentance. Mom, maybe your mom, maybe your dad weren't the best parents. But sometimes they didn't know Christ and they made some bad decisions. But you need to come back and ask for forgiveness. That's right. That's Mom, right. I forgive you. Dad, yeah. I forgive you. Yeah. The son comes to realize I'm going back home. And this is what I'm, he's already planning. He's already, he already has everything planned. You know, like when your kids do something wrong, they make your favorite food. <laughs> when they break something, they're oh, oh, huh? do you want me to vacuum? <laughs> okay, what's up? What did you do? Huh? How much is it going to cost me? The Bible says this. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. Who? His dad. You don't think his father was excited? Yeah. His father looked from afar and he began to run, the Bible declares. Yeah. He might not have run in a while, but there he goes. Yeah. And as he's running, the servants are running behind him while they're following. They don't even know what's going on. But the father recognizes his children. How do I know that? Because when they're going through something, dad. Maybe that when I catch it, but mama says, what's wrong? What's up? What's up? I'm sorry, dad. Sometimes we're clueless. I know. I'm sorry, dad. We're clueless sometimes. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. But mama knows what's going on. Yeah. 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 And daddy has to back up mama. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. What's up? That's right. Amen. The Bible says it's. He said, while he was still a far away off, mm. his father ran to him. I love yeah. it. He ran to him. Mm. He ran to him. But he was far. See, uh, parents, they know the way their sons walk. Yeah. They know their big head. They know where they're at. Yeah. Huh? Oh, there you go. There's Junior. What are you up to? <laughs> I kid you not. We were at J.C. Penney's. So it was, I think, when Crystal was in high school. I think it was in high school or middle school or something. And went to J.C. Penney's to go pick her up. And this is a girl that looks just like her. Huh? Like, whoa! Huh? How many has that happened to, to you? How many has that happened where you get into that one car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My wife got into another car. I'm like, what is she doing? <laughs> Where is she going? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the father knew his son and from far away. And he begins to run. Yes. And he is running with compassion. And he's running with love. And tears streaming down his eyes. From far away. Come on. He didn't even give him a chance to talk. Mm -hmm. He throws his arms around his son and he begins to kiss him and kiss him and kiss him. And his father, oh, well, well, wait, Dad. I want to talk to you. Wait, Dad. Hey. Oh, I feel his presence right now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I feel his presence. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. His father with compassion. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Hallelujah. And the son finally is able to come up for air. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. That's true repentance. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I don't even have to go in the house. He doesn't even allow his son to finish speaking. And look what he says. His the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Take a 
of those filthy garments that he has on. Yeah, come on. Take out those filthy garments. Hallelujah. When we didn't know Christ, we were wearing filthy garments. Yes. Yes. When we didn't know the Lord, whatever the God of this world, the devil told us to do, we would do. That's right. That's right. But now we have a new robe on. Hallelujah. His father says, bring him the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandal it on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it and let us have a feast and celebrate. Change his robe. His heart had changed from a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. Something happened. Put something new on him. And he said, put a ring. What is a ring? A ring is a sign of authority. Restore his authority. Take your place. Quit hanging your head so low. Quit worrying about what other people said. Oh, he, he missed it. He failed. He missed a big time. Shut up. Hallelujah. I'm getting up again. Hallelujah. I'm getting up again. Yes. Yes. See, I, I need to find people that know what faith is. Yes. Yes. And you need to cut people that don't know what faith is. Yes. Sister and brother negative, you need to keep get him out. Yes. 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 You're supposed to love everybody. You can't judge. The Bible says don't judge. No, you got it wrong, honey. I can judge your actions, but I cannot judge your salvation. Jesus said you'll know them by their fruits. A tree that doesn't produce fruit, he cuts it. I'm not going to the church because they preach hard there. Yeah. Yeah. I can give you stories. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I went up to Sister Pastor and I wanted to hug her and she gave me that look. <laughs> <laughs> she don't like me. <laughs> and then they do this. But I found the church. Come with me. Ah, that's right. That's right. Come with me. Give him a ring, restored authority, sandals. No longer will you walk barefooted, stepping on rocks and cutting your feet. But God said, I will cover you. Yes. I will direct your crooked path straight. Yes. And I will give you the ability to crush the devil's hand. I'll give you that ability. His son learned a lesson. Then I love what verse 24 says. Look at 24. For this son of mine was dead and he's alive again. Hallelujah. He was dead and now he's alive again. He was lost as now is found. And they began to celebrate. Amen. And, and I, I'm not going to celebrate. See, one thing you have to know, notice, know about Jewish customs, they like to party. A marriage lasts a whole week, seven days. When they celebrate, it wasn't just for an hour right. until they run out of food. Right. Huh? Right. You know those kind of people <laughs> that they come with nothing, but they're going with something. All right. <laughs> when the food's out, they're gone. All right. I would help you wash the dishes, but <laughs> you don't want to go there. My son was dead, but now he's alive. We need dads that know how to get a hold of God. And how to, how to be the man of God. Yes. Maybe we need to apologize to our children. Not because you stand up for this right. You, have, you don't have to apologize for that. When you stand up for the word of God and the things that are righteous and they leave, you don't have to apologize yes. for that. We do need to show them how to be a man of God. How to be an example. That's what we do need. Yes. And I believe in this house, there's people that you're like that, prodigal son. You don't have a right relationship with God. Every eye closed, please. You don't have a right relationship with God. You've journeyed a long way off. And you've been saying, 
I need to go back home. I need to go back home. God is waiting for you. And when you come, he will throw his arms around you and he will kiss you and he'll restore you. He will restore you. With every eye closed. If you know your life is not where it should be. And you want to get it right with God. I want you to make your way up to the altar. reverent in the presence of God. Their souls are hurt. 
are thinking about suicide. But God says, if you let me, I'll send you. Regardless of what you've done and regardless of what has happened, God says, I'll send you. Father, bless my brother. In the name of Jesus. You know what the Lord is doing right now? He's hugging me. doesn't matter what your earthly father has done to you. God says, I love you. Yeah. I'm proud of you, God says. I'm proud of you, God says. Yeah. 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 Father, bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill him with your power, Lord. Fill him with your love right now. Spirits and rushing Thank you. 
just stand, I want you to extend your hand this way. Thank you, Jesus. This is what the Lord is saying. I got you. I got you. I got you. Don't stress it. Don't stress it. Listen to you, sister. I see you carrying the ministry on your shoulders. Sometimes it, nobody knows. It stresses you out. And what the Lord wants me to tell you, I got you. I got you. This morning, you're about to step up. You're about to step up. God says you're going higher. You're going higher, God says. Fresh anointing is coming into the house. Thank you, Jesus. Fresh anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus. says, I promise you some things that's going to happen. I promise you some things, God says. You tell God, wait, God, when? When? God says, it's coming. I uphold my word. And I see that my word will not come back void. And it will accomplish the thing. Don't even worry about your children, says God. I got them. God says, I got them. I got them, God says. I got them. He's right there, Esther. He's right in front of you. 
He's right in front of you. <laughs> He's right in front of you.
I got a little over so I don't make mistakes, God says. I don't make mistakes. You didn't miss the call. You didn't miss it, God says. You didn't miss it. I don't make mistakes. I called you since you were little, God says. I called you since you were little. I don't make mistakes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. You shut my head down. children. Y'all have two children, right? Three. Good Lord, have mercy. Lord, I bless all their three children in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for new doors for you as well. Because you stay connected to the anointing. Remember what happened to Elisha? 
He wanted the double portion. Elijah said, you've asked a hard thing. He said, but if you see me going up in glory, you're going to get it. And the mantle came down. And you know why the mantle's on you? Because you stay connected to Pastor Gilbert. You stay connected to Pastor Diane. And I don't know all the doors. God, God hasn't shown me all the doors. He's open. I know this is one door. This is one door. Maybe the first new door. But we love you, Pastor Gilbert. We love you, Sister Diane. And your dad and your mom are looking in heaven, smiling, rejoicing that you didn't give up. I remember Brother Ben used to tell me all the time. He said, Pastor Mark, because I would go preach for you a couple of times different places that you were at. And I remember Brother Ben told me, he said, Pastor Mark, we're never going to let Pastor Gilbert quit. Amen. We're never going to let him quit. Amen. When he feels like throwing in the towel and quitting, we just encourage him yeah. and lift him up. Yeah. And I want to say thank you, Livingstone Family Church, because you encouraged me today. You encouraged me to keep running the race. There's some people that have walked out of my life. But the word that I believe the man of God gave me is God's got this. God's got this. Amen. Before you see it, high five somebody. We're almost done. We're not just done yet. We're going to be done with the Facebook. But uh, how many have enjoyed being in the presence of the Lord this, this Sunday morning, Father's Day? Been good, isn't it? You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. And like we always like to say, one last thing, Alexis, before we go out, my wife told me she's going to take over, give the prizes, and um, got some door prizes, and we got some gifts for the dads. And uh, But before we do that, what do we say, church, to our Facebook family? God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Give the Lord a clap off and a praise. Join